Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Andron and welcome to the first part in a tutorial series where we're going to be building this Flutter application uh, using the MVVM design pattern. Uh, so I'm not going to waste too much of your time. Let's just kind of jump right into this. Uh, this application is relatively simple. Uh, before we actually jump into creating it, I'll just give a general walkthrough of what the final product is going to look like. Uh, it consists of three main sections. Uh, it has this header view up here. It has this uh, task info section that shows the total amount of tasks and tasks remaining. It's very responsive, so as you toggle and complete tasks and delete them, it will update. And uh, you can also go in and then add one with this floating action button. Everything's going to pop up. Everything that's not immediately available on the UI will pop up in the form of these bottom sheets. So that way we're not navigating back and forth uh, through too many pages in what's supposed to be a pretty simple application. Uh, so if we add a new task, hitting done will just automatically add it to the list. Uh, and if you don't, you know, enter anything, it's not, it's just going to dismiss that bottom sheet. And uh, yeah, everything is really just baked into bottom sheets. Even this delete button is just going to open up a bottom sheet down here uh, just to keep things consistent and simple. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's just kind of jump right into this. Uh, just to keep everyone on the same page here, um, I'm going to be, let's just go ahead and make sure that we're all starting off with this empty Flutter project. And uh, within your material app, um, I just currently have an empty uh, home container. Uh, the home should just be an empty container, right? And then, uh, yeah, first things first, let's go in and let's create our three folders uh, for this MVVM design pattern. And real quick, if you're unfamiliar with MVVM uh, or design patterns in general, just think about it as a way to keep our code organized. It can get really messy real quick, so we're just gonna keep our code organized while we build this app. So with this, this library, let's create our models folder. Let's also create our view models folder. And let's create our views folder. Um, and because we don't want our main.dart file to be overloaded with a bunch of stuff, let's create our home page in a different view or uh, in a different widget. So within our views folder, let's go ahead and create a new Dart file and call it taskpage.dart, which will serve as our home page. And then within here, let's create a new stateless widget. Um, if you're using VS Code and you have the Flutter and Dart uh, extensions installed, typing in STL or STF will prompt you to like basically auto-generate a new widget, depending on whether you want it to be stateless or stateful. Uh, we're just going to create some stateless widgets, and I'm going to call this task page. All right, great. And within this task page, um, again, we're going to be creating something that has a floating action button, and the floating action button is made available to a scaffold. So instead of returning a container, let's just go ahead and return a scaffold. And let's make sure our scaffold has a body that is a container. And let's also make sure that our scaffold has a floating action button that is a container. This is just placeholders for the time being, but we'll go back to come back to these shortly. And uh, okay, we're good to go. Uh, now what we have to do is just go back into our main.dart file and replace uh, the home widget in our material app. Let's just go ahead and replace that with our task page. And it might complain saying that we need to import that library with the file that we just created. So let's just go ahead and import that. And then once you save that, you're going to see that it should update the background color because the default color for a scaffold is white. So cool, we are good to go. Uh, if we take a look at our application, uh, our finished one rather, um, what you're going to see is that it really breaks down into those three main sections again. And we're going to want to make sure that the layout for this application is consistent throughout different like devices. So you can imagine how this iPhone 14 plus, uh, if we just kind of provided fixed values for our width and our height, it would not scale well onto different devices. And when I say scale well, I mean like literally like the, the pixel ratios would not scale very nicely and things might just get really contorted. So what we're going to do is use a column with a bunch of flexible widgets. Um, I say flexible, we're going to be using expanded widgets uh, with flex values assigned to them. So let's go ahead and replace this container with a column. And within our column, let's go ahead and create an array of children. And let's create three expanded widgets. So each one of these is going to take in a flex value. And it's also going to take a child. Now, as a placeholder, just for the time being, let's go ahead and create a container for each one of these children within this expanded widget. And let's say the color is going to be color, colors dot, colors dot red. 
let's just take this, let's just copy it two more times, say green and then blue. And what you're gonna see is that it, depending on how much, uh, what the flex value you have assigned, it's going to add all of those flex values up and then determine how much space to assign to the view, uh, depending on how much uh, space is available on the device. Uh, one last thing that you're seeing here probably is that this is expanding all the way up into uh, this dynamic island, or if you're on an older iPhone, it will you know, go into the notch. So let's just go ahead and wrap this column in a safe area view. So if we just wrap it, this widget with a safe area, and then we save it again, we're gonna see that it ignores that top section, but we want it to expand and extend all the way down to the bottom. So what we're going to do is within the safe area, uh, just for the bottom parameter, just set that to false. It takes in a Boolean of whether or not you want to also acknowledge the bottom area in the safe area. Uh, and if we set that to false, it will just ignore the bottom area and then it will just expand down into there. Uh, so now we have something that's a little bit more resembling of the final product that we're going to have. Uh, the last thing we're gonna wanna do is just make sure that the flex values are accurate. Um, if I do that, okay, that'll keep that cleaned up. Uh, let's make sure that it also is using the expected amount of space. So you can see right now, it's just dividing them all up separately. So what we can do is instead of having this last flex value as one, if we just replace that with a seven. It's going to resemble, again, our application a little bit closer and um, perfect. So now we have that top header section, we have that task info section, and then the actual um, you know, list view section. And last thing we're gonna wanna do is go in and add our floating action button placeholder. So we're not gonna actually implement this just yet, but what we're, what we're going to do is provide a width of 50 and a height of 50. And then let's just say, okay, I don't know what I'm doing, 50. And then let's just say our color is going to be colors dot, say black. If you save that, now you can see that little action button goes there and we have something that's starting to kind of look like what our final product is gonna look like. So taking a look at this project, uh, currently what we have is a scaffold that has a safe area with a column. And this column is really where the majority of the views are going to be nested inside of. And eventually what we're going to do is build out each one of these sections. Um, so this top section in this very first widget is going to be our header view. The second section is going to be our task info view. And then below that is going to be our actual task list view. So eventually we're going to replace these colored containers uh, with the actual views that we're going to build out. And uh, yeah, so I think that's it for video one. We just kind of worked on layout. The importance of getting your layout set up initially is that it's just going to carry over well onto other devices without getting too like obscured. And it's just going to look nice on any device target that you want to build for. So uh, yep, I, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in video two. Peace.